Hello, I'm Intralism and welcome to Let's Play This Is The Police. So This Is The Police is a game that will be coming out, I think on Steam in like eight days time, as of the date of putting this up. Uh, it's a, basically a management game where you have to manage a police force at the same time as dealing with like the bureaucracy and doing what politicians want you to do, and also dealing with what the criminals want you to do in that you can choose to be corrupt or not because you are saving for your retirement and well, getting backhanders from criminals tends to, you know, somewhat fatten the pot of your pension. So, uh, we're gonna give it a go, we're gonna dive right in. Uh, it should be fairly explanatory to go through the storyline at the very beginning. Um, there will be some little cutscenes which are kind of this sort of, um... I don't know, what do you call it? Like, cartoon art style? I don't know there's a word for it. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be kind of listening to those. I won't, like, talk during them. If you do want to skip them, you can just skip ahead in the video. People sometimes complain about that, I'm like, dude, you can just skip ahead in the video. It's okay. Uh, feel free to do that if you want. Day 1, July 15th, Monday. Mayor Rogers, sex maniac, City Hall confirms rumors of Jack Boy's resignation. Mark War 2 to be shown in Freeburg the day before the worldwide premiere by the mayor's personal request. Uh, so basically, this is how like every day begins. That you start on like July 15th, which is a Monday. Uh, in, in your city of Freeburg, and you get these, like, uh, newspapers drop down, they kind of have sort of titles that might indicate what's going on in the city, etc., and also how the storyline's playing out. For now, this is just sort of the introduction. Uh, our mayor is an interesting person. Um, I think we're Jack Boyd, so we are resigning, and the mayor can get a movie shown before the premiere just by his request, so he's kind of powerful and maybe an interesting person. Uh, let's go to work. Hmm, such a lovely car for police commissioner. I kind of think we should be paid better. When I was a kid, my father sometimes told me at bedtime that if I closed my eyes and didn't open them for a long time, all the demons would blow away. Yesterday I turned 60, but I still take his advice. Not because I'm sentimental or want to keep the memory of my father alive. I just can't think of a better solution. To get away from all the demons that haunt Freeburg, I'd need to wear a blindfold 24-7. Plus, it's a good idea to act blind when talking to reporters. At least that's what my colleagues say. They're afraid of press conferences. But for me, it's more like a confessional. No matter what lies you tell, you're privately thinking the honest answers. It helps me remember who I am. The fact that I'll be reading all about it in the papers tomorrow is a small price to pay. Call it penance for the preacher. This is the first time I'm afraid of those answers my mind has given me. Not because I'm mad I'm losing my job. Though it's true, I'm mad as hell. Not because I subconsciously blame everyone else. Though I damn sure do blame them. And don't even ask me what my next move is. I can't imagine. But even that doesn't scare me. The worst thing is, I know I'm gonna have to do something. And I'll be damned if I know how far I'll go. I may have a lot of vices, but predictability isn't one of them. I learned a long time ago how to drive away the swarming demons. But what do you do when they're trying to rip your soul from your skin? Shutting my eyes tight as I can. The best solution remains the same. Play blind. I just hope the reporters think I was blinded by the camera flash. Okay. We, we could play dumb, or we could not. So we get to choose here. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, yesterday, the mayor's office officially announced your resignation. Did this come as a surprise, or did you know about it in advance? Uh, it was a surprise. The mayor discussed it with me. I've been expecting this bullshit from the mayor. What's the difference? Um... Uh, uh, he's kind of like effectively firing me, but at the same time, I should probably like he's a powerful guy, and I want my pension, 
So... I'll be honest. I'm gonna just be honest. Like, screw it. I'm, I'm old. I'm getting ready for retirement. It was a surprise. I thought I'd be working to please them for another five to ten years. I just want to serve in the city. I was very surprised, of course. Do you already know the name of your successor? Uh, of course not. And I don't think the mayor's office knows who it is either. This honesty is going to get us in so much trouble. After the recent corruption scandal, your deputy uh, Francis Kendrick said he's looking forward to resigning. If the mayor offered him your position, would that change his mind? It's hard to say, but I can't think of a more deserving candidate than Kevin Hendrick. I I don't know about Kendrick yet. I'm I'm perfectly happy to maybe just be like, yeah, sure. Like there was a corruption scandal, but obviously, like he was looking forward to resigning, so like. Nothing's been found to be definite, so sure, I'll support my, like, deputy. Although Kendrick was acquitted, many still believe that the police are corrupt with the meth here. Do you have anything to say about this? Um... I've never worked with the meth here, but I can't speak for every man and woman in the department. I can't follow all my employers around the clock. Oh, that wasn't quite what I was intending, but close, okay. Do you think your personal relationship with the mayor could be the reason behind your retirement? Um, it's often difficult to say what guides policy decisions. Okay, thank you. Right, that's the end of our press conference. I think that went really well. How's the back today, Mr. Boy? Same as usual. How did the press conference go? You can read about it in the newspapers tomorrow. Don't let anyone in. Even Mr. Kendrick? Especially Mr. Kendrick. Oh. I don't see Captain Kendrick. Do I not like Captain Kendrick? Ah, nom nom nom. Tic Tacs, right? Mm, Tic Tacs and a chocolate log. As soon as I heard the door creak, I knew what face I'd see. When I tell Emma not to let anyone in, there's only one man it could be. Rude, arrogant, no warning. That's Mayor Rogers in a nutshell. White summer shoes, Ugh. white socks, Ugh. white shorts, Ugh. white polo shirt, Ugh. and the white smile of a hungry shark. Mayor Rogers enters every room like he owns the place. Even the floorboards under his feet sound like they're creaking an apology. He never shied away from the odd corruption scheme. It's like the devil walks behind him. In the movies, the villains controlling the city play golf with the judges. Rogers plays tennis with them instead. That's about the only difference. Jack, I was hoping to catch you after the press conference. You, uh, you ran away so quick. There's no smoking at City Hall. No reason for me to hang around. Well, this morning I signed a ban on smoking in all public buildings. Soon you won't be able to smoke here either. How evil. Soon enough I won't be here at all. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. The people of this city like you, Jack. The police chief of all people. <laughs> Don't, uh... Don't betray that, Jack. Don't get wrapped up in any schemes. Sit nice and quiet for the next 180 days, and uh, and you'll be remembered as a hero. That's the only thing that you still have left. Be the hero. Then how am I supposed to scrape together a retirement fund? You had a million chances to secure a luxury pension. One that even I would have envied, although I've never set aside any money for myself. I'm not planning to retire any time soon. Shouldn't I have like a statement? 180 pension? days of quiet, Jack. That's all I need. I don't have any problems with you, and you won't have any problems with me. 
I have oh. a new assistant, Troy Starr. If you have something to tell me, call him. But try not to bother him. He's a he's a busy man. <laughs> I'll do my best. And quit smoking up the office. One of my friends will be using it soon. Wow, what a day. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, babe. Only the mayor has this number. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, is this Troy Star? Yes. Go fuck yourself, Troy <laughs> Star. <laughs> I like me. Uh, Mary Raj is a professional. I never quite said that, but sure. Head of coach department owns villa in Italy. Civil servants' wage won't be raised this year. Of course it won't. Mm. Cops don't use the police station cafeteria anymore. There's some kind of stigma against sitting shoulder to shoulder with your partners. Everybody just takes snacks from the machines or grabs a meal and hammers it down in the corner like a vulture on a corpse. The main thing? Don't look into anyone's eyes. Could be construed as an invitation to sit together. The only people eating here are ghosts. My deputy. Francis Kendrick. He recently became one of those ghosts. The subject of one of the most devastating corruption scandals in the history of Freeburg. No evidence to support the accusations, but everyone knows Kendrick's days are numbered. I need that file I asked for. Needs to be ready tonight. Francis didn't say anything, but I understood. Ghosts aren't supposed to talk. Besides, I got a feeling he was already finished. Uh, I'm a 20, a 60, uh, that's 20 year old, uh, the 60 year old police chief a few months away from retirement, I don't need anyone telling me how to do my job, I'm just giving you a tutorial, I've seen most of it already, uh, I'm sure we can figure anything I haven't seen out, um, so basically this is what you've got, you've got like an A shift and a B shift, you want to see B shift at the moment, and, uh, you have officers who like do the beat patrols, and then you've got detectives who do like the investigation work, and then they've got like a number at the top, I think like 100, 20 or is it 150? I think it's 150 is like average. So you've got like some people who are really terrible, like um, old lady Price over here. And then you've got some people who are fairly good, like uh, Coach over here. I think they're better. Maybe they're on A shift. Um, and then you've got, you know, even like both sides of the distribution. You've got good, you've got bad. They've got a fatigue meter at the side. And they've also got a rank thing. The rank thing means that like they improve people that they're on duty with. Um, it's the same for detectives. So let's start the day. Okay, so you've got to respond to like crimes as they develop, decide who goes to which crimes, which crimes are the most important. I'm trying to go through this quickly because uh, time will tick by and I don't think I can pause it. No, there's no way to pause it. Uh, so, hit and run. This pauses it though, so I'm going to talk now. Uh, every day more, a married couple exited a commute store and saw a van in the parking lot back over a homeless man who'd been digging through a trash can. The driver jumped out to help, but got back in the van and quickly left once he saw that he'd hit a bum. Okay, well, um, that sounds like a, you know, it's a definitely a crime. It's a hit and run. It's not like a false alarm or anything. I'm going to pair my very best with my very worst, and I am just hope that you're going to be brought up, because uh, you do have a rank, so that's what... I have no idea what this would mean in American cop language. Like, in terms of, like, is it sergeant? Must be... Is there one below sergeant? I think you just go straight to sergeant, I don't know. I don't know. Um, in the British Army, that'd be Lance Corporal, but... So, yeah, we'll, we'll put you together, and hopefully you'll bring each other up, like, uh... You know, Price will get some experience or whatever. And so, right. So we've responded to that in a timely fashion. Oh, another one. Theater manager reports that during a showing of Citizen Kane, a drunk man attempted to force his weight into the theater carrying a snowboard decorated with the word Rosebud. When he was denied entry, he violently attacked the cashier and is currently fighting the theater's security guard. Okay, well, you know, we need to go to that one. So we'll send... Um... Purdy and Austin. Okay, we don't need to swat or anything. Can't actually send swap to this, but that's that. You know, that's worthy of a decent response. So now I've only got two officers left. So we're already kind of over budget on our resources. They're still traveling to the scene. 
and Koshi and Price are now at the scene. Ooh. Okay, what, what happened? Offender caught, officer unharmed, <gasps> and they get experience! Not as terrible anymore. Yay. So yeah, there's a chance that they'll catch them, there's a chance that someone will be injured, etc. depending on what the thing is. Fight. Officer unharmed, civilians unharmed, offender caught. Nice! We're doing well today so far. Um, like, the worst thing is, like, a civilian gets injured. Uh, if an officer gets injured, actually not that bad, because you just get a new officer. Ooh, an armed robbery. Three teenagers out of a shotgun have robbed a videotape store made up of a whole collection of adult movies. Because, of course. Uh, the criminals fled in the car, but the store manager wrote down the car's license plate. The owner is Janet Brown, who lives in the suburbs. How long do we have? We've got a little while. Fight. Law firm. Brother and sister clash each other over their deceased father will. I don't dare separate them. The hospital guard is off duty tonight. Okay, well, I'm going to wait until a few people are free. And then I'm going to send the very best officers here. Right, so now you're free. The very best officers going to the armed robbery. Because, you know, that's an armed robbery. And then I'm going to send you two here, which is going to result in, like, substandard, but, you know. It's a brother and, like, sister fighting over will. It's less likely to result in someone getting shotgun in the face. I'm going to say that. Ghetto. Passerby saw some teenagers attack an elderly musician, then run away with his guitar and money. Um, I mean, I could send one person. I can send three on this mission if I wanted. But I could send one person because it's a lesser thing. But I'm going to send two, and that will mean I have no one to do any crimes right now. Well, respond to any crimes. In theory, my police don't do crimes. They probably do. You've got to earn a pension somehow. Ooh, okay, a choice. Armed robbery in the suburb. The vehicle in question is parked outside the Brown residence. The sounds of ma <laughs> the sounds of moans, loud laughter. The sound of moans and loud laughter can be heard through the living room window. So do we turn on the sirens and the loudspeaker and shout the house surrounded? Do we knock on the door, open up police, or sneak into the house through an open window? I think what we do is we just scare them, right? They're kids. So we just turn on the sirens and the loudspeaker and shout the house is surrounded. Defend the court. Yes, officer unharmed. Nice. The fight. Ah, they escaped. Ah, oh, now you're back down to five. Surely they've got to, you know, collect the inheritance though. So, like, we know who they are. Because they died arguing about inheritance. Ah, oh, offender escaped. No! When does the day end on this shift? Okay, ends now. Right. End day. No need to get SWAT out. Right, and then this is A shift. Uh, who are all at home currently. Now you can tell, like, if you need, like, more people on A shift, because, like, someone's died or budget cuts or whatever, you can tell B shift to come in on A shift, so you can tell, like, individual people. But notice that their fatigue bar's now gone down. So you can bring people in and be like, yeah, Price, you were terrible. You need to work overtime. And then, you know, they'll lose, um, like, their... their it's kind of the morale slash energy, it's like a fatigue meter. Uh, and then they'll be like less productive and more likely for bad things to happen, which would be bad. Uh, detecting nothing to do today, kind of ease you into it. Used to be when I asked Kendrick to stay late at the office, he liked to grumble and crack wise. Nowadays, he doesn't have the strength for it. Slumped shoulders, blank stare, wrinkled skin. The past few weeks, I don't hardly recognize my old friend. In his younger years, he reminded me of a gallant royal officer in an old Kipling story. Kendrick isn't just crumbling under the weight of the public pressure, but from the shame of it all. Internal Affairs raided the library he inherited from his grandfather, hoping they'd find buckets of cash stashed in the pages. Heard about the look on his face, the fearless policeman standing helpless in horror, I've known Francis for 30 years. The past 20 years, he's played loose with the law. Ah. And I know that at a certain point, every stolen dollar brings more misery than anything else. Probably sounds crazy, but I sympathize with the guy. What can I do? Your friends are your friends, and these are the waters we swim in. Mm. Called all of the people on that list today. 
Now they know you're in business, so you could get a call from any of them. You don't need to worry about any of them. I've cleared them all. Um, and what kind of business are we talking here? It's nothing too serious, just like you asked. Should be just a few small favors. Payments will vary depending on the situation and who you're dealing with. How much are you looking to earn? Half a million. Half a million? Why not a whole million? Because everybody wants to take a million. Figured I'd try something different. Half a million in 180 days? Well, you could earn it all above board if you netted all the big fish and hit all your bonuses. Never knew you for a fisherman. Well, you never got into my business, and I'm not trying to get into yours. But be careful about bringing in any other cops. Sooner or later, they'll put the finger on you. And, and one more thing, Jack. I remember what you said, but I should probably add one more name to that list. Christopher Sand. Sand. He was born in Dawn. Christopher G. Sand. Everyone knows the name, but few could tell you who he is. The old man stays away from the spotlight. Always wears old-fashioned jeans and knitted sweaters. Gives to charity. Rarely attends social events. An avid hunter, I hear. Even dabbles in poetry. You'd never guess he's the head of the oldest and most powerful gang in the city. Goes back as far as his great-grandfather. And Sand is strict about following the old rules. He rarely involves himself in commonplace murders and robberies. Hardly needs to intimidate anyone to get his point across. The people who work for him each have their sphere. They provide protection where needed, even work with the authorities when they want to make a deal. Meanwhile, Sand pulls the strings without getting his hands dirty. People sometimes mistake his quiet approach. A couple years ago, an arms dealer decided to expand its business without asking permission, and his whole family paid the price. In four weeks, Sand killed 31 people, old men, women, even a few teenagers. And Sand's people made sure every paper reported it. Frank, I don't want to hear you say that name again. Jack, please, listen to me. I'm in with these guys. We agreed, Frank. That's not the kind of business I'm into. I don't go there. Never have, never will. Okay. So, he implied that, like, he, no, he actually said, like, you can make that half million. If you hit all your bonuses. So, in theory, like, if I hit all my bonuses and stuff, and I play the game really, really well, but I can, I can get by without doing the dodgy stuff, maybe. But, I have to be, like, beholden to the political whims and stuff, and I also have to have a very good game. Alternatively, I can try and skirt the law, and by that I mean take bribes, which is actually just breaking the law. Uh, but whatever. And, uh, play it that way, and be dodgy. Or, you know, a half and half route where you take a few bribes, maybe now and again, for this and stuff? I don't know. I think we'll, we'll see how it goes, you know. I'm, I'm kind of thinking that I'm the idealistic cop who got to this age by trying not to break too many rules here and there. But uh, now I've been screwed over, maybe, you know, I'm just, like, you know, 180 days, I'm at breaking point. Maybe maybe I'll go for a few things, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, see if we can get that half mil. But I think we'll end uh, today's episode here. Uh, a lot of cutscenes at the moment. Uh, there are quite a few cutscenes getting into it because it's trying to introduce the characters. Um, I don't want if people are, like, pro or con cutscenes in general. It should be interesting to see in the, in the comments uh, what people think about them. Uh, but uh, there'll be more gameplay in like the next few episodes. Uh, and if I don't record enough, maybe I'll put up more than one on one day if I can. That does depend on the weather, though, because I'm recording at midnight because it's the coolest time of the day. Because it's way too hot. Just I prefer the Arctic. But anyway, I've been really seeing If you enjoyed, please like, not subscribe, please consider subscribing. Do let me know down below in the comments. And of course, do like, because that lets me all know like how much you want to see the series in this game in particular, and how much you're kind of uh, looking forward to it, into it, what you think, playstyle, etc. Like, that's all really good feedback, especially for a new series and a new game for the channel. Uh, and yeah, it'll be out in like eight days' time. So, uh, until next time, stay shiny.